There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another box of my very most favorite books, which I had stored at my parents' farm in Saskatchewan a decade ago, and then we all kind of forgot where they were. Last night, I'm here home on a visit from Japan. We found them, and it's I've just been like a kid in a candy store opening these boxes. I've looked through them already, but I'm going to show them to you, and that way keep track of which books are in which box. So this is box E. Here we go. This is a gay novel from the mid-1980s, Jack the Modernist by Robert Gluck. It's highly experimental. When I read it in the early 90s, I quite liked it. I don't remember a blessed thing about it now. Another in my rather complete collection of the works of Mark, the gay American poet Mark Doty, School of the Arts poems by Mark Doty, all signed. This book didn't quite get tucked into the box correctly so it's quite warped it just needs to be pressed between some books it's a gay novel from the UK that I never as far as I remember got around to reading Graham Wollaston's Stranger Than Love published in 1985 I think I bought this at a secondhand bookstore in London when I was there in the mid 1980s Philip Lopate's anthology of personal essays against joie de vivre Oh, no, this is his own. These are his own essays. He has uh, edited anthologies of uh, personal essays, but these are his. I have not read it. This is another book by the gay Asian-Canadian novelist, Wayson Choi. This is his memoir of his childhood, Paper Shadows, A Chinatown Childhood. I have it signed by Choi, Family Is Who Loves You. He passed away earlier this year, and I want to read all of his books and do some a spotlight video on the writing of Waisen Choi. This one's going back to Japan with me. Blood and Tears, an anthology of poetry about or for Matthew Shepard, edited by Scott Gibson. 1999, include, including poems by John Ashbery, Robin Blazer, Raphael Campo, Alfred Korn, Robert Gluck, Rachel Haddows, and many more. Now, this one, I obviously didn't find out about it until after I stored it in this box. What's his name? Greg Morton's Three Cups of Tea about his project of getting funding from Americans, including the American government, to build schools for Afghan girls. And then it was revealed that... He was a complete scam artist, and most of that money went into his own pocket. So this one is going in the trash, actually. Hornito by my Mike Elbow, one of my favorite gay novels of the 1990s. It's a rather uh, controversial cover, <laughs> but, you know, Volcano. Um, I don't know if I would like it today, but I quite, I loved it back in the day. This must be so dated. The, Gu the Gutenberg Elegies by Sven Burkitz. He was decrying the electronic age. I read it, and I, I just all I remember about it is I loved the writing. But it's kind of silly now to think about decrying in 1994. But I just remember it was beautifully written. Who knows? I might pick it up again someday. This is one of my favorite novels by Margaret Atwood. Most of her novels I didn't like or weren't, wasn't interested in reading, but this is one that I really did love, The Blind Assassin. I believe this is signed. It's not, but it's a first edition that I read probably the year it came out, 2000. And this is one of my very most favorite novels, Ernest J. Gaines's A Lesson Before Dying. It's just ripped my heart out. It's about a young African-American teenager falsely accused of murder in the 1940s in Louisiana. And, of course, he was convicted and sentenced to death because, you know, America in the 1940s or the 2010s. A local teacher was asked to spend time with him to give him some kind of an education where he could feel worthy of... To feel some sense of self-worth before he was executed and that's the novel it's just incredible 
I don't think I would end up loving this novel now, but I did at the time. The Sacred Lips of the Bronx by Douglas Sadownik, a gay Jewish-themed novel from the written in the 1990s, I think. I kept this one. I thought it was a pretty good novel. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. Enough said about that. I have an autographed collection of Anne Carson's poetry, The Beauty of the Husband. And it's a beautiful book. Look at that, eh? Uh, printed in 2002, autographed in 2005 at AWP in Vancouver. I thought this was a really good novel by uh, Carol Shields, Swan. It was a literary mystery. And I think this is a first edition. Doesn't matter, but uh, signed by Carol Shields. I forgot I had this. This is the a novel by the uh, black South African playwright, Athol Fugard, to Totsi. And I can't remember now, maybe... Rashmika can help me out here. There was an, a movie that came out in the 2000s called Totsi that I have the DVD of, and I loved it. And I don't know if it was based on this novel or not, but I'm sure that's why I got the novel, and it's in beautiful condition, and I've never read it. Totsi is, uh, I believe it's, oh, it's Afrikaans word that means thug or hoodlum. 1980 novel. A book of gay poetry from Canada. Designs from the Interior by John Barton. I think I liked it. I think I read it. It's autographed. Another autographed book of Mark Doty's poetry, Source. This one is pretty special autograph. W.S. Merwin, The Lice. He came to AWP in 2000, whatever it was, five, and I got my copy signed. Didn't he die last year? Another book about Nelson Mandela, The Man and the Movement by Mary Benson. And this is, I think, a first edition of Hugh McLennan's novel, Montreal novel, The Watch That Ends the Night, that I loved as a teenager. It's not a teenager novel. It was one of the first adult novels I ever read. It was, oh, this is maybe a second edition, 1959. I have a newer paperback copy in Tokyo, so I don't need to take this one, but I would like to reread it sometime to see how it holds up. This was a popular gay novel in the 1990s, Martin and John by Dale Peck. I predict that if I reread it today, I would absolutely hate it. I talked about having had a date, quote unquote, with Peter McGee back in the 1990s. This is his first novella, Beyond Happiness, the intimate memoirs of Billy, Billy Lee Bell, which I think I read, but... What a sweetie, eh? Hey? Another awful novel by Jonathan Safran Foer, autographed. Is that my present? <laughs> no, no, no. Um. This is a biography of the gay British playwright, John Lair's uh, Prick Up Your Ears by Joe Orton. I watched the film when I lived in London for the summer of 1987 and read the book the same summer. This book originally belonged to my aunt and went into my library when I was a young, precocious librarian. There's my book plate, the Library of Sean Mooney. The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson, Hodgson. How do you pronounce that? Hodgson Burnett. I love this novel so much, and this has family sentimentality behind it, and it's a beautiful hardcover edition. I don't think it's a first edition. Looks like maybe a second edition, 1911. This one was also an important book in our family. I, I was given it, I think, by my grandparents. Nobody's Boy by Hector Malot. It's about a French orphan. This edition published in 1916, and I loved this novel. And the last book in box E is a huge coffee table of Keith Haring's art. Barely fits in the box. All right, that's it for Box E. Thanks for watching. Ooh.